We know that the universe is expanding, but what does this mean for the energy in the universe? Well, as the universe expands, the energy density for photons, how much energy is in a 1 meter box, decreases. One would expect it to decrease as 1 over the change cubed. We expect this as the volume of a box is x cubed, so we expect density, stuff divided by the volume, to go like 1 over x cubed. But remember, as the universe expands, the light is redshifted, it loses energy. So in fact it goes as 1 over the change to the fourth. Matter, however, goes as 1 over the change cubed, as matter doesn't change in time, just the spacing between the matter. However, vacuum energy density wouldn't change in time, but would be a constant. Why is this important? It tells us that although we live in a matter-dominated universe, once radiation would have been dominant, ending about 70,000 years after the Big Bang, at a universe mean temperature of about 9,000 Kelvin. This is as, for small values of x, 1 over x to the fourth is greater than 1 over x cubed. But the universe is now quite large, so 1 over x cubed is greater than 1 over x to the fourth. I bring this up as some properties of the universe before this, like the mean temperature, acts differently before and after this time. The change in the physics follows from even deeper physics, and it is this deeper physics that we use for models of matter dominated, radiation dominated, or even an empty universe. Going even further back, at one second after the Big Bang, the temperature would have been 1.5 times 10 to the 10 Kelvin. Temperature 2 is a measure of energy and the mean temperature of a photon at this time would be about 4 MeV. Remember that electrons can be produced by photons with energy of about 1 MeV. So we can have pair production and hence annihilation freely occurring throughout all of space. This forms a dense blob of photons and electrons to a point where photons can't escape, essentially like being in a box. As a result, we cannot see this time in the universe with a telescope. This is why we use colliders like the LHC to see what happens at such high temperatures. The furthest back we can see in the universe is to the cosmic microwave background radiation. As we go further back, everything is closer together and at a higher temperature, to the point where mean energy density is high enough to form protons and neutrons at about 7 times 10 to the 12 Kelvin. After this point, as the energy drops, they will stop forming and electrons and positrons will form instead. This allows for the following reactions. An anti-electron neutrino plus a proton going into a neutron plus an anti-electron a proton plus an electron going into an electron neutrino plus a neutron. The double arrow corresponds to the reactions going both ways. They form an equilibrium where the reactions are balanced. That is, the same amount go one way as go the other. But remember how neutrons have a slightly higher mass. This means that as the universe expands, the ratio of density of neutrons to the density of protons decreases per meter cubed. We end up with more protons. Moreover, if the mean energy is less than 1.29 MeV, protons no longer turn into neutrons, breaking equilibrium as neutrons still decay into protons. A rigorous treatment finds that the ratios at the time the equilibrium breaks is about one neutron to every five protons. But like I said, neutrons still decay when free. If they don't form atoms soon, all of them will disappear. Recall the reaction, a neutron plus a proton goes into a deuterium plus a photon, where the photon is the binding energy. So can we expect the deuterium to form? Yes, but can we expect it to survive the very hot early universe? No. This is because the binding energy for deuterium is 2.2 MeV. It won't drop to well below this temperature until 250 seconds after the Big Bang. Once all of the neutrons are caught inside of deuterium atoms, they will stop decaying. But all of this time that they have been decaying, the ratio has been upset, leaving it at about 7 protons to each neutron. If all deuterium then fuse into a helium nucleus, we expect to see almost universally a hydrogen to helium ratio of 5 to 1. That we have a mass ratio of 5 to 1 of hydrogen to helium is important as it is close to that which is found in nature that is, in gas clouds, in space, for example. However, no other model has been found that gives such an accurate prediction. The only other sensible cause could be stellar nucleosynthesis done by stars. But the homogeneity and quantity of helium cannot be predicted by the fusion-forming helium in stars.